Gary, thank you for that uh, overwhelming introduction, for heaven's sakes. You'll get it. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's my pleasure being here this morning. A few years ago, I was down in Austin helping my daughter Amy with a new baby. And one morning, I was taking her little three-and-a-half-year-old Joe to school. And Joe is a pensive little guy to the point that when you talk to him, he rolls his eyes up and he's listening and taking everything in. So he's, he's a little quieter. So I'm doing all the talking as I'm driving through the hills of Austin. And I finally get to the fact that I said, Joe, do you know how much your mom loves you? How lucky you are to have a mommy like that that gets your snacks ready and has these cute, cute clothes for you to put on for school and flies kites with you and does all these things. I said, you know, I did those things with your mommy when she was little. Silence. I said, Joe, you know, I'm your mommy's mommy. And from the back seat, I hear, I always wondered who you were. <laughs> I always wondered who you were. You know, it is really hard to get to know a person, heart of a person, especially if you're a three-year-old that doesn't live right next door to them. We have to really give it our, our all. We have to extend ourselves beyond what a friend of mine calls the cookie level, which we all know. Good morning, how are you? Do you think it's gonna rain this weekend? How's your family doing? To looking at someone in the eye and going, how's everything going? Going beyond the cookie level and getting to them. And when you can master that with one person, how fabulous. And then if you share something in common that brings you together, how much more wonderful is that? Now, when you multiply that by numbers and you're able to get a group of people where you can say, I know their hearts. I know what, I know what really drives them. I know why they do what they do. And you have many people coming together. It becomes magical. And it becomes community. Wherever your community may be, it drives you and it brings you closer to one another through this interest that is developed from people that come from so many different backgrounds. I am very blessed to be in a community I love, and it's called the Cornerstone Bible Study. I've been a member 28 years. I've been very blessed to be teaching for about 13 years. And I can tell you, when I look out at the people as I'm looking out at you this morning, and I can go in there on Tuesday mornings, and I know I'm going to see happy, receptive, smiling faces. They're going to look at me because I know they love me. And I know I love them. And they will laugh at my jokes. And they will not talk during the, the time I'm speaking. And they will come up and say to me, oh, this was great this morning, even if it really wasn't quite so great. Because we have one common goal in mind. And our interest in this community is to come to prayer and to know the Lord. And you can't do that in a community without coming to one another. Do we come from different backgrounds? Oh, absolutely. We cover 33 parishes in St. Louis and the Metro East. That's amazing. That's a lot. That's a lot of square footage, shall we say, on, on, on this room. 33 parishes. Do we have a different financial status, background? Are we all at different places? Oh. We run the gamut. We run the gamut. But what's interesting is that I can only tell you what a handful of women drive. I don't know what cars they have. 
I don't know what businesses their, most of their husbands are in. I don't know if their kids went to the right schools or not. Because we come together in joy to focus on what is important to us. It's a time when we can put everything else aside and focus on this common interest. Age-wise, we go from mid-20s to upper 80s. How many times do you, would you think people might be planning a get-together or planning their party, planning whatever, and thinking, oh, what do you think? Is this person, do you think, maybe a little bit too old to bring into this to set here? Don't ever say that to my mother. You know, my son made the mistake of saying that one time when she said that so-and-so had died, and Jim said, how old was he? And Mom said, 71, and he went, oh, oh, well, you think that's all right if you're 71. <laughs> she, we don't talk about age in that regard. And in Cornerstone, it's not a factor. It's not a factor. Because we come together, and what we do at Cornerstone, and we have to do it every year because we have new people coming in. We just began this week. And when you're welcoming new people, you know that they have to get to the point where you have gotten in this community, where you are trusting and you are searching the heart of people that they can open up and allow themselves to be stripped down, so to speak, and to, to release everything that is in their hearts so that people deal with the joys and they deal with the hardships and the struggles that for, in many cases the world never knows. It's the people that have gained the, the love and the respect and the confidentiality that this little community has to offer. Now, your community may be your church, it may be your business. It could be possibly a group of people that come together and discuss books. It could be an art community, a cooking community. Whatever that is where you bring people together, it becomes, it becomes and transforms into something that is altogether different than when people are alone. It's something that we each need in life to take us through the walk we're walking. I know there have been mornings where I have thought, I don't know if I can do this. I've got so much going. I have problems at home. I have this or I have that. I'm exhausted, and I'm giving the teaching that morning. And you know what? For us, the person that we focus on is the Lord. So... We are, we are miraculously lifted up by that. Are, are the concerns and all the problems, do they dissipate? No, not usually. But we are able to handle them with his grace and with, with the interaction and the love of one another. It is essential that we join in community, that we bind together together, with some interest, and we join and we get people to come so they can have that partner, that group that through life supports them, somebody on each arm so that when we fall, we've got those people to hold us up right there. It's amazing when I look at the people that are in this group and I look at their dedication, and I look at all the work that they put in. It isn't just myself as a teaching leader. There, there are facilitators in small groups, and there are alternates in small groups, and there are greeters, and there are people that take care of the treasury situation, and there are people that are writing the commentaries for us, and it goes on and on. Everyone has his own job to do in this community in which I belong. It is a joy. It has transformed me into letting me know at the darkest times 
that it's all right, that I know there are people out there for me, and I can do this, and I can get through. I encourage you, in whatever your interest, to go into it wholeheartedly. Ask anyone that you think might have an interest in coming in and joining with you, and join them together and and in, together you can form this solidarity that enables you to go out into the world. You want to do this because at the end, you don't want anyone having to look at you over in your community and say, I've always wondered who they were. You want to be able to act boldly and be on fire with it. Rise above all the conditions that you might have and give it everything you've got. Thank you so much. <laughs>